Standing on the promises of Christ my to tell you thank you for letting us see a brand new day. Father God, we thank you that you have given us this another chance to come to your house of prayer, to lift up the holy and the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and God. We've come, O oh God, to worship you as we study your word, to worship you as we go into worship, to hear from heaven, and to lift, the, lift you up, O oh God, in song. We thank you, God, for you've been such a good God. In days that are past and gone, you have proven yourself to be the almighty God. You've proven yourself to be our strength, to be our present help, to be our armor. Oh, God, you have just held true to everything that your word says you are. And for that, God, we thank you. And for that, we owe you the praise. Amen. So, God, as we continue to study about praise and what our part is in Praise and worship, oh God. We ask you to humble each of us. Open our hearts, Lord. Break up the, the uh, hard heart heartedness of our hearts, oh God, so that we may hear your word, that you may speak to us, Holy Spirit, and that we may confess our faults, line up and get it right with you, oh God. For your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. That, that means that you want us to praise you. Because when we praise you, we are exemplifying that we truly do know and believe that you are who you say you are. And we do, God. So we come standing on your word. 
We ask you to lead us and guide us as we share this morning. If it's not meant to be said, Lord God, please hold it back. And if you do desire that we hear from you and hear from what you have to say, Lord God, we ask you to give us the boldness to speak your word as you have ordained. We thank you and we ask this prayer in your mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 A ball, excuse me, ball of confusion. Mm -hmm. Ball of confusion. Our key verse says, and he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Mm -hmm. That's Psalm 9, verse, verse 8. Before I begin, I will go on and read the printed text, which comes from Psalm 9, verses 1 through 12. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I, show for, I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou satest in the throne, judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge for time, in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the nation his doing, the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. That's Psalm 9, verses 1 through 12. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Today's lesson continues to reiterate the call for the believer to praise God. Praise is an expression to God of our appreciation and understanding of his worth. Our praise is our saying thank you for every aspect of his divine nature. Our inward attitude becomes then an outward expression of praise. Mm -hmm. When we praise God, we help ourselves by expanding our awareness of who he is. Psalm 9, today's text, is a poem that focuses on God's deliverance of the righteous, and it continues in Psalm 10, um, which dwells on God's judgment on the wicked. These two concepts go hand in hand, for God's justice entails the, both the lifting of the oppressed and the lowering of the oppressors. For his word says that he will exalt, he will exalt those that are humble and he will bring down those who are too high. He mm -hmm. will make you a base. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 10 and 30 says the righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. No matter what it looks like, the word of God says the righteous shall never be moved mm -hmm. for in him we have eternal life but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Amen. This psalm is written by David, and theologians attribute this to, a, to the time when he um, had victory over the Philistines. Most people cannot fathom that even in the time of trouble, God still desires a praise from us. That's hard for people to understand because of the state of mind that we find ourselves in when we are in a physical battle. Although the Bible declares and tells us that the wrestle is not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but it's against other things, principalities and powers, things that are 
that are present, things that want to exalt themselves above who God says he is, that's where our battle is. Mm -hmm. And because we are representative of Christ in our lives, in our declaration, in our lifestyles, then Satan wants to take us out. Therefore, battles will come. So our state of mind puts us, as our title declares, in a ball of confusion. Mm -hmm. But consider the Israelites. When they were being attacked by the Moabites and the Ammonites and some Meunites in 2 Chronicles 20, when Jehoshaphat was king, jo Jehoshaphat did what the believer ought to do. Whenever there's a battle, uh, scripture tells us in Ephesians that we are first to stand strong in the power of the Lord and in his might. Mm -hmm. We got to first remember who we belong to. So Jehoshaphat went to God in prayer because he recognized that no matter what's going on, I belong to God, therefore I go to God. Mm -hmm. So after praying to God, a message was delivered to him and he prayed on behalf of him and the people of God. Um, a message was delivered to them by a messenger named Je Jehaziel. And Jehaziel told the king Jehoshaphat, and all who were right there in Judah and Jerusalem, that the Lord says unto you, don't be afraid or don't be discouraged because of this vast army of Ammonites, Moabites, and Meunites. Mm -hmm. They were a, 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 a large number of people who were supposed to be driven out of the land. But because uh, uh, they were not completely driven out and they did not obey God to do what he had told them to do. They were now going to do what they thought and take back the land that God had promised to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. But uh, Je Jehaziel said, don't be afraid, neither be discouraged because of these vast, this vast army or because of the big problem. It might look like a big problem. He says, but the battle is not yours, it's oh, God's. It's God. And Jehoshaphat then, receiving the message from Jehaziel, uh, bowed with his face to the ground, and so did the people, because he was their leader, so they followed and did what he told them to do. And they fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and praised God, mm -hmm. the God of Israel, scripture says, with a very loud voice. Mm -hmm. They won the battle because they obeyed, obeyed excuse me, and did it God's way. So we know we don't have to be a ball of confusion. No matter what it looks like, when we do what God has told us to do, that is to praise him in spite of Trusting God, we don't have to be confused in our spirit. Mm -hmm. The flesh is going to be the flesh, right. but the spirit man has to bring the flesh under control to go to God in prayer and to do what he's already told us to do. Mm -hmm. So our lesson encourages us to praise. It lets us know that praise is the posture that God expects from us. He wants us to know that we have the victory in him. Amen. David asked God in Psalms 22, verses 1 through 3, Why, God, have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring or my complaint unto you when a problem comes. But he says, Oh, God, I cry in the daytime, and it's like you don't hear me. And then in the nighttime, I cry, uh, in the nighttime, I'm silent because when I called on you in the daytime, it was like you didn't hear me. But then he says, but thou, O oh God, you're holy. And you inhabit the praises of Israel. Mm -hmm. So rather than complaining, that's not what God wants to hear from us. He wants us to praise him. Mm -hmm. This is God's expectation from us 
in whatever life deals to us. Because if God is God, and God is God, yep. but if God is Lord of our lives, then our instructions are to pray. If we live in him, then we hesitate not ever to give him the praise. Mm -hmm. Our praises take us from suffering to great joy. They help us to focus on God and on his promises to us. They show us that we can celebrate God even when times are hard or when a battle is before us. God is still God. Yes, and in, the po in his power and in his might, we can, we should still give him all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Our first three scriptures of our text uh, are titled in our quarterly anticipation of thanksgiving. Anticipating an opportunity to thank God. Mm -hmm. That's called praising him in advance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, um, pa um, Pastor Marvin Sapp writes a song, sings a song that I'm going to praise him in advance. I'm going to praise him before I get the victory because I already know I'm going to have the victory. So we have no reason to stagger in our praise, but we can do it because we know that we are going to receive the victory. Even if the victory is not victorious by man's standards, by God's standards, because man want to see things in the physical, but the believer has to look for things in the spiritual. So David begins with a pledge or a promise to God with his whole heart. He says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to your name, O Lord, most high. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy, at thy presence. Mm -hmm. When mine enemies are turned back, anticipating that's what's going to happen. David promises God to give his, give his very best in praise to him for all of his marvelous, wonderful works. David here makes a deliberate choice to praise God with all that is within him. He's saying, because I'm going to obey your commands, I, I've already committed to that, then I am going to receive the victory. A deliberate choice is a lifetime decision to praise God and to seek him with all of our heart and all of our soul. It just simply means that I got a well-made-up mind to do all the things that God has called me to do. He's called us to obey. If you love me, obey my commandments. If we obey the commandments, the commandments have already told us, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land, serve him with gladness. Do it all because you know that God has the victory. So Psalm 57 reminds us that we got to have a well-made up mind, a fixed heart. My heart is fixed, oh God, my heart is fixed. Therefore, I will sing and give praises unto him. David resolves to praise God wholeheartedly, and this can only happen when we have yielded ourselves to the will and the way of God. We are uh, exemplifying first to God that I trust you, and I trust you with a glad and a satisfied heart. Well, why would our hearts be glad and satisfied? Because of what he's already proven to us, right. that he's done what he's done in the past, and what his word promises for us if we obey his command. Mm -hmm. David was a king, but he wasn't too high to give God the praises that he was due. He wasn't too high to recognize that no matter what circumstance he was in, and he was a warrior, he was a fighter, he was known to win battles, but he did it because, scripture says, all throughout his life story, God was with him. Mm -hmm. Regardless of his stature, stature in life, David chose to boast in God alone. His boasting is of the marvelous works that God has done and saying that his praise will be an expression of appreciation and highlighting that God is worthy, was worthy, and is still worthy of all of our praise. This 
kind of talking can only come when you're in right relationship with him. You're not going to brag on nobody that you're not in relationship with because that means you don't really know what they're going to do. You don't even know what they're capable of. But when you're in right relationship with God, then you can boast. Scripture says in Hebrews <laughs> that the Lord is my helper. Amen. You can boast that because you know where your help comes from. So that's all David is telling us, really, in a nutshell, in these first few, few, few verses. God, God, as we get to know God in relationship, we start to appreciate who he is to us, and then we can boast, too, on who he is and what he's done. Mm -hmm. His marvelous works undoubtedly include the facts of, of creation. Even when we have not experienced him, we can watch the marvel of his wondrous works. We can read in scripture where God created the heavens and the earth. And we know, because we smell it, that the heavens and the earth consist of so many more. And that most of them are beneficial to us. We breathe clean, fresh air because of the oxygen. We don't think about how things go together in the world and in, in, the, in, the, in the air because of God's orchestrating, because of God's creation, because God made this world. He created it, and he created it so that we would have it to enjoy and we can live a life that is abundantly blessed by him. So his, his, his marvelous works could start there, but as we continue on in relationship, um, we know that there are numerous times he delivered us and protected us. Mm -hmm. That's why scripture says in Psalms 8, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who has set thy glory above the heavens. And when I consider the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Who, who is man? Who is man? that man can't recognize the wonderful works of the Lord. And then as man recognizes, man moves from what man can see physically to what man knows in his heart about who God is. So David goes on to declare, because of thy marvelous works or wonderful works, I can praise you, God. And because of that, I'll be glad and I'm going to rejoice in you. I'm going to sing praises to your name, O thou most high. Mm -hmm. David says, I will be glad. I, I take joy in rejoicing in you. I take joy in praising your name because of who you are and for what you've done. In my praise, I'm delighted and uh, to celebrate who God is. Psalms 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble, those who know of God, who have humbled themselves, shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So as we recognize who he is, we're glad, we're delighted, we're excited to celebrate who he is. And therefore, as we boast in him and, and we magnify him, because those of us who are along with, those who believe with me, those who are a part of the body of Christ will help me without being asked mm -hmm. because you already know who God is. Right. So nobody has to urge you, oh, come on, y'all. Uh -huh. Nobody right. should mm -hmm. have to do that for a child of God who recognizes the goodness of God. So the phrase in this phrase, in this poem, was meant to make it easier uh, to remember songs because it was a repetitive line. You constantly see throughout the songs, I will bless the Lord. I will be glad. I will rejoice in thee. I will praise thy holy name, O Most High, suggesting that nothing can stop our praise. Mm -hmm. The psalmist said, if I had 10,000 tongues, I, I couldn't, still couldn't praise him enough. Mm -hmm. you, get, you get that 
that, that, that expression, that overwhelming desire to give him more and more and more. And because of that, you can say, if I had 10,000 tongues, it still wouldn't be enough because I recognize that God has been so good to me. That's right. The I wills in scripture are commitments to praise and dedication to the one true and living God, O thy most high. So when we are trying to urge people who don't have an I will in them, mm -hmm. you know, they ain't made up their minds yet. Yeah. We ain't uh -huh. doing nothing for them. We ain't, we're not doing because they haven't made up their minds. See, when our heart is fixed, our mind is made up, then we will praise God regardless of what goes on. Mm -hmm. So all of David's recollections urge us even more to have a truly thankful heart that will be overwhelmed at the goodness of God and as a result will praise him. Then David goes on to share an, in, uh, uh, an, an, an incident or a situation where he recognizes that when he was in trouble, when my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. Scripture tells us throughout um, that our enemies are, are on us. That we have, first we got enemies, and that enemies are those who, um, who are not on the Lord's side. They are those who are against what God stands for. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the enemy's uh, tricks are subtle. Sometimes the enemy's tricks are blatant. Sometimes the enemy's tricks are sneaky. Mm -hmm. But God, who is an all-seeing, all-knowing God, will take care of the enemy. We don't have to um, fight back, he said. He will avenge for us. He will get the revenge for us because those lifestyles even exemplify that they are against God, not against physical man. Okay? Amen. Against the psalm, again, excuse me, the psalmist recalls specific instances when his enemies fell and died at God's presence. God's presence is revealed when the enemy has been defeated and declared, surely that was a child of God, mm -hmm. or surely God was with them. The Amalekites, the Jebusites, and the Philistines all suffered defeat because God was with David. God's mighty presence interceded on Israel's behalf, and those idolatrous nations perished. God never lost a battle. And God never will lose a battle. Amen. So when God's presence is there, it intercedes on our behalf. When we recognize God's presence, then we know that God is there to fight the battle for us. That's why we don't have to wait until the battle is over. We can shout before the battle is over because we know that God's presence means something in the life of a believer. Yeah. For thou, verse 4, has maintained my right and my cause. Thou saddest in the throne judging right. Mm -hmm. God champions only a right cause, a right and a cause of these things that are pursued from right motives and with justice. Mm -hmm. God sees all. Therefore, he, he knows and he directs our path because he knows what is right. Mm -hmm. He knows that we are standing for what's right. Mm -hmm. He knows our cause and our motivation comes from who we are in him mm -hmm. and who he is in us. So then he promises what he promised and what he promises is in his word will come to pass. Just as we pray, thy will be done, God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Psalms 19 and 9 reminds us, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. See, ain't no uh, schemes, ain't no devilish ways, ain't no hidden motives coming from God. Uh-uh. The fear of the Lord is clean. If we fear and reverence him, then we're doing it out of a sincere heart. And it lasts. It endures forever 
Then it says the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. See, when God judges, he know what he's talking about. Now, I, I might have something to say about something, but see, my stuff ain't always right. Because I don't know the end from the beginning. I don't know what took place. That's why uh, uh, Ecclesiastes tells us that we ought to hear the whole matter. And what we even find out we're hearing the whole matter, sometimes when we get in position to hear the whole matter, it silences us. Mm -hmm. It makes us, uh, excuse my friend, it makes us shut up. Because mm -hmm. we don't even know the whole thing. We're talking about what we don't know about, but the God we serve, he knows it all. Therefore, that's why when you allow him to judge and handle the situation according to scripture, it's going to be true. And it's going to be right yeah. all together. That's why we have to submit ourselves to him. We have to surrender our ways unto him. David did that. As David went to battle uh, against the Philistines and all other uh, uh, groups of people, David did what God ordered him to do. David was, 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 was called, and David was, was one that, for as first, uh, first Samuel 17 tells us, David heard that somebody was defying the army of the living God. Mm -hmm. Who is that that thinks that they can? Mm -hmm. Who that God created mm -hmm. would do that? Yeah. Who, why in the world? That's all that Paul was doing. You trying to, you just kicking against the prince. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Fighting against he who made you. Yeah. Who, why in the world? And so David's, David's fight as he went forth to overtake and to take back what God had given, yeah. David had his, his motives was right. Yeah. Because David knew what God called him to do. He knew who God had called him to be. He didn't worry about man putting him nowhere. Mm. He wouldn't worry about that. No, he no. wanted to, and he did just what God ordained him to do. Because yeah. God's judgments are true yeah. and righteous all together. Mm. So David here is speaking of uh, God's ability to work on our behalf. That's what that shows us. He's not careful to give himself the credit or his soldiers, mm -hmm. but he knows that it's because of the Lord's doing, the yeah. Lord's favor toward him, that God judges and fends for him and uphold, upholds his cause. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to be careful about who you listen to. Yeah. See, the Bible tells us in 1 John that there are many spirits. Mm -hmm. You know, many folk want to call you to this and that and this and that and this and that because they think what they see in you. Mm -hmm. If it ain't ordered by God, you better sit yourself down somewhere. You better make sure that your cause is the Lord's doing. Mm -hmm. You better make sure that you're doing it God's way. Mm -hmm. At the same time, God judges and punishes the wicked, the heathen, and those who refuse to adhere to his word. Mm -hmm. The disobedience and unrighteous acts call for strict rebuke and, and scripture says erasure from living memory. I want you to think about that. Mm -hmm. Hmm. The one who created, yeah. he do what he want to do. Yes, he right. And that's why even in, 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 in times of death, we have the believer has to uh, accept God is the creator. He made us. He made us for his glory. Yeah. He is the only one that gives life. And he's the only one that determines death. It matters not what happens in between. Mm. It don't matter what happened in between. Because he's the healer. If he want, if he desires, if it's his will that someone be healed, it'll take place. Yeah. But if it's his desire that I'm calling my child on home. That's his call. Yeah, it's right. not ours. It ain't the doctors. No. It ain't the nurses. It ain't how the folk treated them here, there, and yonder. It was God's business. And that's why we have to truly, truly give ourselves to him. We don't know what's going to befall us. Mm -hmm. We don't know, but we got to learn to submit our wills, our whole being to God. Yes. 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 Verse 6. Oh, thy enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, 
and thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. Excuse me. So verses 4 through 10, though I've already talked about 4, 5, and 6, salute our Lord as our righteous king. The Lord who sits enthroned sits there forever, and he is true and eternal, and he's a king who rules over all. As a result, he executes judgment on nations, acting with a fairness on behalf of those who have been oppressed and afflicted. He is the champion of those who are persecuted, providing for them a secure refuge for those who seek him. David places the Lord in a category all by himself, and we should too. When we say that there is none like him, we ought to truly mean it. We ought to, we ought to really Think about what we're saying and resolve to, to know that God is the only true and living God. Amen. That God is king and he is a champion. He's always fighting on our behalf for us. Yes. He handles it all. Yes. It's nothing that we've done, but he would defend us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he is certainly worthy of our praises. Yes. No one does us, does us like the Lord, nor does for us like the Lord. No one has all of our best interests at heart like the Lord. No one has all power, and no one can can call either of us, either for us nor against us like the Lord. No one has an awesome presence like the Lord. So as his children, we ought be willing mm. to give him the praise. Yeah. That's all he's asking for. Amen. God promised, God's promises to us are accompanied by his presence in our lives. If you think about it, if we are abiding in him, then his presence is with us even in times that may seem unfavorable, mm -hmm. that may seem, uh, seem uncomfortable, He's still there. Yes. And in his presence is the fullness of joy forevermore. Mm -hmm. No matter what it looks like. Because, yes. see, I, I've seen it. I know you've seen it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I've seen it move. Move a mountain. Mm -hmm. And I believe I'll see him do it again. Mm -hmm. He made a way yeah. when there was no That's way. Right. Right. And I believe... I'll see him do it again. Because that's who he is. That's who he is. If we look at, at the scriptures in our text, in verse 5, he dealt with the heathen. Then he destroyed the wicked. He put out their name forever that wasn't even a memorial left for them. You think about that. You think about people that we have known that people follow that were misleading mm -hmm. and misguided. Mm -hmm. yep. Portraying in front of the, the multitude mm -hmm. that they were. Mm -hmm. But God knew the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he knew that this, this leading, leading folk into destruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you represent because of what they giving you. Uh -huh. And how they following you and how they got you on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And they they got you looking good. They do everything for you. Got you feeling so full of yourself. Mm. They shopping for you. They your armor bearer, this, that, and the other, not yeah. called by God. Uh -huh. But they're doing all of that, yeah. most of them, for some recognition. Mm -hmm. But still, because you are saying you're the leader, yeah. you're leading, you're misleading yeah. them. Because mm -hmm. what you're doing in front of people is not where your heart. That's why scripture said it when when uh when when uh they were looking for the king, they were looking for a king, yeah, yeah. and they looked at all the Jesse's boys. Yeah, yeah. They looking, they trying to pick yeah. them out based on what they see. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Yeah. We do the same thing. We would we want we want to we want to pick <laughs> we want to pick somebody up for them. Yeah. They married them folk and they over there beating them down. You yeah. ain't know he would do that now because you can't see the heart. Uh -huh. You can't see the layers. Yeah. 
You can't see that that's all his daddy did on the, to his mama and that's all he knows and that's what he gonna do. You can't see all that, mm -hmm. but you got it all figured out. Yeah. And so that, so, so God says, man looks on the outward appearance. Uh -huh. Ain't that what he said? Yeah. But God looks well. At the heart. See, God knows the heart of man. God knows the heart of man. Yeah. So when he deals with it, you looking at them up down on that pedestal, everybody, 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 everybody. And then when they die, scripture says no memorial to represent them. Why? God ain't finna let something represent evil stand before his people. He loved it. He died. He sent his son to die for more than that. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't leave his son to die that we be led astray no. and misled. That's why he tells us, when you get in this word, that's what this is all. In the word, you're in relationship. And in relationship, the truth is revealed unto us mm -hmm. through by the word of God. We fall a lot of times called scripts. What scripts say? You don't know. You don't even know the scripture nor the power of it. You don't want to know the scripture because you won't get in the scripture. But when you get in the word, scripture say, I hadn't seen. Yeah. <laughs> nor have ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. See, we can't we can't do it. We can't. We can't do it. I can't say it no other way. We uh, can't amen. do it. Amen. See, what enters into the heart comes through the word. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. We can't do it. Then he said, the enemy, he destroyed them. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is going to endure forever. Mm -hmm. And he has prepared his throne for judgment. Meaning, he'll deal with all of that, uh -huh. all of that evil that goes on in the world that even we see and have seen in the last few years, because mm -hmm. all of a sudden we paid attention to it once Trump got in office. Uh -huh. But guess what? It was there before then. Amen. It was there before then. Uh -huh. And then everybody want to blame Trump. No, no, no. You can't. No, no, no. No, no, because it's a call on the believer. Uh -huh. The believer to do what the believer's supposed to do. When the believer do what the believer's supposed to do, God said that's when he'll heal the lame. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. When the believer seek my faith, yeah. and when the believer yeah. stop doing the evil of his ways, then he said we're going to hear from heaven. Yeah. See, the believer got to get in check and yeah. do what the believer's supposed to do because the believer think they slick and they want to do it out front mm. and then want to hide. Mm -hmm. The heart ain't right. Doing it for the wrong motives, but what did he say? I will judge. He, David said, the Lord will judge the world mm -hmm. in righteousness. Right, yeah. And he'll minister judgment to the people mm -hmm. in uprightness. Mm -hmm. He gonna give it to them straight. Mm -hmm. He gonna give it to them straight. Yeah. And then he says, and then he'll be a refuge for those who've been oppressed. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause because of some of that leadership, folk been, been, been oppressed. Yeah. Cause see, Folk, a lot of times they get in leash and they want to walk all over folk. Mm -hmm. Want to mistreat folk. Want to say, because I'm who I say I'm who I am, yeah. I have the power to do that. Yeah. Nope. God ain't pleased with that. Yeah. So he said, I'll be. I'll be the rescue for the oppressed. I'll be a refuge for them in times of trouble. I will be that. And they that know God's name will put their trust in him. Mm -hmm. For thou, Lord, had not forsaken them that seek him. See, David wants us to see clearly. Excuse me. That we have a reason to praise. Uh -huh. And it's not a surface reason. It's deeper than what we can see. That's why we got to trust him and trust him with our whole hearts. So in verses 11 and 12, he calls us back for praise. Mm -hmm. Sing praises to the Lord, he says, which dwell in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembered them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Recalling the goodness of the Lord, the psalmist now calls us back to praise God. He, he says, sing praises to the Lord, you who dwell in Zion, who are the congregation of the Lord. Those of you who dwell in under the shadow of the Almighty, sing praises and declare through your praise the goodness of the Lord. See, that becomes a part of your testimony. Because mm -hmm. you can't sing that God be good if you don't really believe God be good. 
Now you might mouth it. And you might uh, uh, let the words come out of your mouth. But what comes out of your heart is different from what comes out of your mouth. That's right. it, it truly is. That's why, that's why when some are singing uh, soloist, if you will, then, then uh, there is no agreement in spirit. Because you can sing, see, and musicians love folk that can sign. Excuse me. Uh -huh. Right. <clears throat> right? They do. And the people who are not in the spirit love folk that can sign. Right. But God's looking for a true worshiper that worships in spirit and in truth. Therefore, what comes out of your <coughs> mouth comes from your heart. Because your heart worships God every time you open your mouth. Uh -huh. Your heart offers praise unto God when your mouth is wide open. Because you, you want people to know. You want people to be drawn to him, not drawn to you. You want people to see him, not you. Yeah. You want people to focus on what you're saying that he can do, not focus on you. <coughs> know that God is God and that God can do what he's promised he'll do. So that becomes a part of the believer's testimony. Folks ought to be able to tell the truth through your praise that you believe that God is a mighty good God. Mm -hmm. That there is none like him nowhere. If you are of those who belong to him, there ought not be a question. Mm -hmm. For David testifies of God's goodness when dealing with the Philistine. He says, you, uh, excuse me, and you too, excuse me, have had some Philistines. <laughs> You done had some that rose up and taunted and taunted and taunted you. And, and but God delivered you from their hands. Therefore, you ought be offering a shout to the Lord. For scripture says, for he who avenges blood is mindful of them. See, God knows. He knows. He knows. He knows who he avenges. He knows who he gives his punishment to. Because he knows us, mm -hmm. period. He does. He knows. That's why he is the righteous judge. Yeah. He does not forget them. And he does not forget the cry of those who are humble, who cry out to him. Mm -hmm. For he is truly a great God. Yeah. He is God who can take this ball of confusion that we have in our hands. That, that, that's what we get a lot of times. And sometimes if we are in right in our hearts and our minds, even as we're dealing with people who are evil and heathens, you know, all that. If we have our minds straight, then we're going to be praying for them. Because mm -hmm. Scripture has told us, pray for your enemies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You pray for them. Right. You're praying for them. Because what you really want is for not, them not to be your enemy. Mm -hmm. You know? When we were kids, we, we kind of uh, uh, acted like we wanted enemies, you know, because you bad, you bad, cross that line, you bad, you bad, cross that line. <laughs> you act like that, but, 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 but people really didn't want to fight. Yeah. They didn't really want to yeah. fight. You want, want people to be, to be yeah. one and yeah. be friends, to be yeah. connected. And so even the believer, though we don't like what people do and what the evil man does and the heathen, we don't like that they're rejecting God. But we have to honor God's word, and God says he'll deal with that. Ours is to do the Christian thing, the righteous thing, to do what Scripture has told us and pray for those who are mm -hmm. our enemies. Because if they're an enemy of me, they're an enemy of God. Right. And we don't want damnation to fall on them. We don't want them to burn in hell. Hell wasn't made for them. Mm -hmm. So God sent his son who died for us all even those who are our enemies right now, mm -hmm. but we still want to do what God has or ordered us to do by praying for them and praying and hoping that they will receive Christ. If they don't, they continue to reject him, then his word gives the final say. The word gives, and we have no excuse because the word has already spelled it out for us. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to be confused. We don't have to feel sorry for them as we do what God has told us to do, we must obey God. Amen. 
And if we right. obey him, we will praise him in spite of what goes on, in spite of the battle, believing that the battle is ours. Mm -hmm. I love that, that song that, that's out now. Um, he never lost the battle, mm -hmm. and he never will. And he never will. And he still ain't going to lose one. You might think that he's going to lose one, but the Bible declares unto us that he won't. And if you go back and read Old Testament scripture about the different battles, physical battles that went on, in the midst of the physical, it was a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. And even in that, he has not. He did not lose, and he still won't lose a battle. So we can rest assured, we can rest in him, knowing that we can praise him with clear consciences when we obey his word and do just what he says. Yeah. I submit this as our lesson, a ball of confusion, Ooh, excuse me, um, coming from Psalm chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. Please go back and study in Ephesians 3, 16 through 22, which further helps us expound on um, God's order, God's control, God's um, sovereignty, even in the midst of times where they may seem hard, he's still in control and he still will be the righteous judge. Mm -hmm. Let us bow for a closing prayer. Father God, we do come again with thanksgiving in our hearts, oh God. We thank you for your word and we thank you for your Holy Spirit's presence. Amen. We thank you, God, that you are always active, mm -hmm. teaching mm -hmm. us and opening up our understanding and drawing us closer to you. We just praise you, God, for who you are. And we praise you that even when sometimes we get off course, you you have your way of pulling us back in, which reminds us, oh God, that you are in control. Yes. But more importantly, Lord, it reminds us of your everlasting love that you have for us. And we just thank you, God. We Amen. thank you that you love us. We thank you, God, that you loved us so much that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. You sent your only begotten son to die that we may have the forgiveness of sin. And in knowing that we have the forgiveness of sin, that proves that you have all power. Power to avenge our enemies. Power to give us everything that we need so that we can obey your holy word. Power to deal with any issue or any battle or any, any, any circumstance, situation that looks bleak in our eyes, in the physical, we know that in the spirit, man, you are on our side and that you will take care of us. Help us, oh God, to always seek your presence in every situation so that we may be obedient children doing what you have ordered us to do. And then we know that we will have the victory, Lord. We thank you, oh God. For our church family, don't want to forget about our leaders. Don't want to forget about our sick, our shut-in, our elderly, Lord God. Don't want to forget about our children. Help us, oh God, and uh, urge us, unction us, move us, oh God, in the direction you would have us to move so that we can be pleasing in your sight. We want to be found pleasing in your sight, Lord God. We pray for our pastor as he is on leave, getting a vacation in the little rest, Lord God, in his, yes. in his physical body. Mm -hmm. And we pray, oh God, that you give him the restoration he needs so that he can come back and lead us for as long as you will have him, God. Yes. We bless your name. We just bless you for him. And we bless you for our leaders, oh God, the leaders that are even willing to follow. We bless you, God. We thank you and sing your son Jesus' name we pray.